Shalom, shalom. So, <laughs> I want to share something today, all right? And uh, before I do, I'm going to go ahead and, as always, get started in prayer. Abba Yah, Father, I pray that you anoint this message, that you anoint me, Abba Yah. Um, I just plead the blood of your son, Yahushua Hamashiach, Abba Yah, over my entire being, Abba Yah. Give me the words that you need me to speak, nothing more, nothing less, Abba Yah. And um, just let this, this message be edifying, Abba Yah. Let it glorify you above all things, Abba Yah. And those who need to see it, let, let it reach them in a way that only you can have it to reach them, Father. It is in the mighty and matchless name of your son, Father. Yahushua Hamashiach, I pray. Hallelujah, 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 who I have your way, Abba, your way and not my own. Hallelujah, and it is so. Hallelujah. All right, so what I want to talk about today <laughs> is interesting. It's amazing how y'all works, okay? So I'm nearing the time of my born day, okay? I don't say birthday anymore, but I said born day. And I have no desire to post, you know, hey, it's my birthday, X, Y, and Z, um, or, or send out a cash tag requesting any type of, like, money. I'm not going to say I don't need certain things. Um, well, I say that y'all have supplied all my needs. I ain't going to say that I don't want certain things, all right? But I have no desire to, like, gather and be celebrated I have no desire to put out a list of requests for the things that I want. No desire to go on a birthday month sort of, um, you know, uh, thing, right? Tour, okay? And it's amazing because I noticed that, like, even last year, y'all had started working on me about that and in such a way where... Um, I started learning the pagan origins behind birthday celebrations. And so, you know, I was like, well, you know, it's still important because when we look at the scriptures, we see how many years, you know, all these great men live. And so we should acknowledge and keep count of the years that Yah allows us to be able to do his work. But it doesn't mean we have to celebrate in the pagan way. So I kept it minimal, went out, had some dinner with my family. Um, made sure there was no like singing of the happy birthday song and they gave me some dessert but I said don't put no candles on it I don't do none of that <laughs> so just very simple and so just to give a little bit of background I've, I've never met someone who's done extravagant birthdays like you won't hear me talking about my birthday all month long I just don't I never understood that um, typically it's something smaller get together with family you know have some food have some cake maybe I might go on a trip somewhere something like that but last year i started where i uh just took the day off to spend with yah i got to be in scripture even more than what i usually do because i had time that day i got to just take walks and and and, and just bask in the beauty of nature and, and worship yah and that weekend catapulted it's you know uh labor day weekend because i had those three days off Actually, four since I took the Friday off. That weekend catapulted a journey that y'all started in me of so many things. Like when I tell you, he started shedding me of, purging me of, and revealing things to me quickly, right? And so things this year have gone a little bit deeper. And it's amazing because it's, it's humbling for me to even talk about this because um, when we think about being celebrated when we think about the concept and i'm going to bring up a scripture in just a minute but when we think about the concept of it's my birthday and the concept of celebrating yourself in that day and what that looks like and what that means and even some of the festivities that people engage in i mean not even just the ritualistic part of the candles on a round cake on uh, a table and everybody's gathered around the candles, right? I mean, that's the ritualistic part, obviously, right? That's very pagan. But just the whole idea of taking a day to uh, 
taking a day or a time period, not to just glorify y'all and say, thank you, Father, for allowing me to be here for another year. What do you want me to do in this year? How can I glorify you? Seeking guidance for him for the year. We like basking in ourselves. And I'm not, I'm not saying like you haven't done anything worth being glad about, but when you think about it like this, let me just break it down. Let me break it down, right? It's Yah who both works and wills to do his good pleasure in us. And that's why it says in the scripture, do all things without murmurs and disputings. So none of us is of our own. No matter how good we are, no matter how great our deeds are, no matter if you got a thousand awards that year, right? You should be praising Yah, not celebrating yourself. And so it's hitting me in that way. It's like, what would I be doing <laughs> to, to corral a group of people and say, come celebrate me? Come celebrate me. And so it says in the word too, it says no man is unto himself. No man lives unto himself. No man dies unto himself. If we get up and we glorify y'all, we do it unto him. If we get up and we don't glorify y'all, we do it unto him. So if I'm coming and I'm, I'm asking and corralling people to celebrate me, how is y'all getting glory from that? It says that he's supposed to get the glory from everything that we do. All of our lives should glorify y'all. So if we're doing any one thing that doesn't glorify him, what are we doing? We're actually still in his glory because of everything that we've been able to do is because of the fact that he sustained us and we're going to go celebrate ourselves. And so it's crazy because like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying this from a place of judgment or condemnation or, Hey, this is what you should do. This is what you should not do because Yah has been so merciful with me on so many things as he's transitioned me from year to year, even like celebrating Christmas from like, even before I came into the awakening, I started feeling like, okay, so if Yahush is the reason for the season, and I know now that's a whole nother story. I know it's about to move, but that's what we were taught growing up in church. If he's the real reason for the season, why are we not celebrating him? Why are we giving each other gifts? So I started getting a little bit more like uh, removed from it. I remember, I remember like I got my brother and father the same thing, but just different size jackets utility jackets i got my sisters the same thing different sizes i got everybody something very specific i knew they would use but i, I felt very removed from it i felt like what are we doing here we say we love the mashiach and i wasn't saying mashiach at that time but i'm like we say we love christ we say we love jesus but we out here buying other people's gifts we, we're, we're setting up a tree we're busy we're wrapping gifts we're we're we're, we're getting the house together and we're cooking all this food and nobody's really taking time to honor him the opposite for feast days, because the feast days, you have to prepare your heart, consecrate yourself, get the leaven out of you for months, lean up the Passover, right? So feast days specifically glorify him. You can't be of yourself. It's not about anybody else, <laughs> right? It's a time to meet Yah. And so I just think about how merciful he's been with me in my transition from a lot of things he's taken me out of over the past year or years. And so I can never like, push anything on anyone and it even says in the word like there's no condemnation to those who are in Mashiach Yahushua so how could I bring that but I'm just sharing that because I'm sharing what he's doing to me like it's such an humbling thing it's okay so here's the scriptural reference that I wanted to share it comes from Matthew chapter 14 and it reads at that time Herod the traitor heard of the fame of Yahushua and said unto his servant this is John the Baptist. He has risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. For Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. For John said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. And when he would, and when he would have him, hold on, and when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet, right? And so basically he didn't have him put to death because the multitude, lots of many, pe many people counted him as a prophet. So he didn't want to have that shame on him of doing that, right? But when Herod's birthday was kept, but when Herod's birthday was kept, right? Kept, honored, observed. The daughter of Herodias danced before him and pleased Herod, whereupon, he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. So she danced in such a way that he it pleased um, Herodias that he said, whatever you would like, you know, you can have, I'll give it to you. 
And she being before instructed of her mother said, give me here John Baptist's head in a charger. And the king was sorry. I could imagine he was like, okay. All right. Um, nevertheless, for the oath's sake, and then which sat with him at meat, he commanded it to be given to her. And he sent and beheaded John in the prison. And his head was brought in a charger and given to the damsel. And she brought it to her mother. And his disciples came and took up the body and buried it and went and told Yahusha. All right. So the origins, uh, historically, biblically, we don't see that common men celebrated their birthdays. We do see, obviously, there's an acknowledgement because when you look at even Genesis, we see how um, it shows the number of years, right, that, 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 that men and their sons, that they lived, right? It doesn't show that they had a celebration of each individual birthday, but it does give an account to how many years people lived, okay? And so it's not that we don't acknowledge our, uh, the days of our birth. It's not that we don't uh, praise Yah you know, and seek his guidance. But until <laughs> so many centuries ago, people other than sovereigns and kings did not celebrate their birthdays in the paganistic way that most of our society now does. And so what's important is that sometimes people shift to intent and the intent becomes a focus. But origin and covenant will always supersede intent. And the reason for that is because if something has a wicked origin, you can't unearth that. It's going to be wicked, right? Regardless of what your intent is. Some people say, well, I made a good thing, a bad thing, a good thing. No, the origin is something that <laughs> is so deeply rooted, right? If it, whatever that thing might be, right? It's best for you not to yoke yourself with it, not to tamper with it, all right? And so, um, just wanted to share that to give some scriptural context about um the topic all right so you know if i do decide to go anywhere it'll just be more so me getting away and getting sealed so that i can be able to hear from yah and so that i can be able to get some guidance on you know what he wants me to do and know in this year and sort of you know get to a place where i can hear his voice and really you know just get into that secret place with him. That would be the only purpose of me doing that. And that's that's what I did last year. I didn't go away anywhere, but I just took the day off to really just, you know, get censored in him. And um, this is, like I said, this is just me sharing what he's doing in me. This is not me attaching it to anybody else, but I'm just like, I'm, I'm feeling heavy in my stomach right now because I think about how merciful he's been and how vain I was all those years thinking that even the greatest thing I did that I needed to be celebrated. Like the dead day. <laughs> and we think about it like in a day, so many things go on every single day. Like somebody could be getting an award. Somebody could be teaching a classroom. Somebody could be becoming a, a leader of an organization. All these things. But you on this day, this is your day. <laughs> every day is yours. And so you take this day and you say, this is my day. We got one day that we're born. And then one day that we return back to dust. All right. And I heard someone say that. Well, I was like, okay, you, you being a little bit too extra. You being a little bit too extreme. But now I get it. I really get it. And if you really do your research, what you will see for uh, saints in this, that is the highest day for them. Because according to saints in this, their phrase is do as thou wilt. Right. So a birthday is the highest day for them. And so I stopped saying the word birthday and I started saying born day. All right. But even then I started feeling a little bit convicted about, like, okay, well, I'm just going to acknowledge that Yah has blessed me with this new year and just say born day and just keep it a little bit more simple. Go out to eat, do this, do that. And I ain't saying that I'm not going to like eat or nothing that day, but I would almost, and I can't believe I'm saying this. I would almost rather do something on a separate day than that day. And just let it be fellowship, but me have nothing to do with it. Like, who am I? 
And as I share, I'm not sure if I shared this in any of my videos. I was going to make a testimony video about this, but y'all actually showed me when I was in a uh, prayer and worship one day that I am not my own. He, it was like my spirit was looking at my flesh. And I cried, probably the biggest cry I've ever cried because I realized that even for me to be in this vessel is a gift. I'm not, like, I, I'm not my own. The same way Jonah tried to run from uh, Yah when Yah gave him that assignment and <laughs> bought him ticket to Tarshish. You can't run from Yah. He commands your being. He, 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 he sifted the waters. And, 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 and Jonah was spew out into the belly of that big fish until he humbled himself and realized that Yah is sovereign and he's not his own and he got to do this assignment. If not, he's going to be in trouble with Yah again. So he did it. So who are we? And so, like I said, this is just my revelation, but it's been something leading up to the, you know, the day of my uh, born day, I guess that's the right, the way to say it. It's just been something where it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a heaviness of a humility over me of who am I? Like, who am I? But yet, you know, of course I'm a vessel for y'all, you know, so I am somebody, but not because I'm somebody, but only because y'all makes me to be so because without him, I'm nothing. And so what I'll be doing that day. And those days and that weekend, relaxing, <laughs> because it'll be the Shabbat, <laughs> praising and worshiping him, and seeking him for some guidance and instruction, seeking to know him, to hear his voice more deeply and clearly, and be intimate with him, and do what pleases him, and, and see how I can live even more consecrated before him. All right? So I pray that this blesses somebody, some someone. My dog is in the background barking. She needs some love. Shalom.